Okay, guys. I hope you're enjoying this mini course so far. Uh, yesterday we had a lot of fun. So today we're going to talk about something that this guy, Victor, already touched upon. Yes, that's right. We're going to talk about sense of touch. Who knows what's portrait on this painting? <laughs> yes, indeed. It's actually a fresco by Italian painter Michelangelo, painted around 500 years ago. It illustrates biblical creation of first human, where God gives life to Adam by simply touching him. Michelangelo was very careful to choose touch from all other senses in his painting as one of the most interesting senses. And I personally agree with him as being in Slav's lab at Yale, touch is what I personally focus on in my research. And today I'm going to try to convince you guys why I think touch is so fascinating. So touch is essential for many, many things in our life. When I see a kitty, the first thing I want to do is to touch it. By touch, we humans express love, or when we tickle someone to make, it ha him, to make them fun and laugh, or when we meet new people with a handshake. So touch is extremely important for us humans for social, social communications. Or when the baby is born, the first action is to give the newborn to its mother so she can touch him to express her affection. Oh, sorry. Touch is also important for perception of our world. We feel touch when we're walking down the street and the wind is blowing to our face. On, when we're eating, there is a texture of the food which is as important as the taste. When phone rings, when your mother calls you, it vibrates, it also a sense of touch. And even pain is a form of, of touch, although this guy definitely doesn't feel any. And Thanos tried to end the humanity by touch. And I think this is a clear reference to the Michelangelo's painting where he showed the creation of humanity by touch. So I hope you remember this scheme shown by Victor yesterday. Everything starts in your skin where a bunch of touch receptors are located. So touch receptors are neurons. So mechanical stimulation going from the skin, going through the sensory neurons to the core, the brain, and then back to the muscle. So brain constantly receives millions of signals like this. Let me show you how brain activity looks like. This is crazy. This is, we're looking inside the brain, and these are neurons constantly active and firing. So you're overwhelmed with information. Right now, sitting here, you, there's millions of things happening in your brain. You, you're listening to me. There's neurons from that, there, hopefully you listen, or, or you position your body, or maybe some, some of you feel it's a bit cold there, or every single thought you, that you have in your mind, it, at the end it forms this, the action potentials. Despite how crazy it may look, it actually is very organized. We know that cortex of the brain is essential to receive in process information from all our senses. For example, when I talk, here's the auditory cortex. Uh, so it, you can, you're activating it and you can hear me. I also activate the speech cortex. Um, where is it? Where is it? Yeah, well, you found. <laughs> and so similar to all the other senses, like sense of taste, smell, vision, and so on. For touch, we have this cortex called somatosensory cortex. Does anyone remember what somato means in Greek? What? Uh, yes, exactly. Well, I'm glad you, you're really good. So I had to Google it, actually, before this lecture. 
So next to touch, there is a, there is a motor cortex. So they are connected. The so motor cortex is responsible for movements of our body parts. And they are closely related. So because today we're going to just talk about touch, forget about the rest parts of the brain. So let's just focus on motor and touch cortex. As you can see, let's, let's actually slice these parts. We're going to make two slices. As you can see, each of these cortexes are responsible for specific body types. For example, when I touch my nose means my forefinger, I'm act first what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using motor cortex, activating neurons here so I can move my hand to my nose. Then I'm using my sensory cortex to first feel the touch in my finger as well as my nose over here. So I'm, right now I just activated those specific regions in the brain. I, and yes, you can do the same. So each body part, it goes similar to each body part, it has specific localization in the brain and it's responsible for its sensory abilities. So what can we say by looking at how the, they're distributed along the brain? Can we say which part are more sensitive by looking at this map? Well, in fact, all the, all the body parts are disproportional. So for example, you can s we can say that the face is bigger than the belly, or the tongue is bigger than the foot. And it's because these parts are more sensitive in our body. S OK, who knows how does this crazy monster called? No? Anyone? So in fact, these are two crazy monsters, and they're called homunculuses. So these are derived from the previous slide, one from motor what is called motor homunculus, and another one is sensory homunculus. And in fact, these are not the monsters, but represents mine as well as your body based on the relative proportion to the level of motor or sensory abilities. So from these two beautiful people, what can we say? What is the most sensitive part of our body? Yes, exactly. It's actually hands and also lips and tongue. So I wasn't able to tell you all this information if my lips and tongue weren't so sensitive. This is one of the reasons why we are able to, to talk compared to all the other animals. Hands are absolutely the most sensitive touch organs of our body. I have a book for you guys. Who knows? what this is and what's it for. Exactly. So this book written in tactile system used by people who are visually impaired. So have a look guys and pass around. Yeah, the, the animals has texture as well. Not much. OK. So now while you're looking, let's go a bit deeper to see how the process of touch appears. So as you remember, it all starts with the skin. So remember I mentioned touch receptors? So they are localized in different la layers of the skins. And these are neurons. So you can see, like for example, this is a touch receptor, this one. Uh, this is a touch receptor. So mechanical force will activate those touch receptors, and we will feel touch. I mentioned earlier that we can feel 
vibration, tex texture, and pain, and so on, right? Well, turns out that for each of those types of mechanical for stimulation, we have a distinct touch receptor in the skin. So let me try to explain you. So this is, these are from the previous slide. These are examples of touch receptors. For example, we have Merkel cells when we feel like touch or indentation. When, we, when the phone rings, we have this thing called mesonic corpuscle or, or pacinian corpuscles for when we take something heavy. So what I want to do now is to try to activate specifically of each type of these neurons. I'm going to give you some uh, touch boxes so you can personally activate those neurons. And, and one of them, this one, uh, has a sticker in it. So please don't look inside and don't tell what it's in there because we, it's, a, it's a game. We're gonna, next, we're going to have a quiz and you're going to tell me what you think that is. So, okay, so we will pass these boxes around one by one. Just try to, don't look, try to touch and identify what's inside and then pass it on. Yeah, same, so pass it this direction. Oh, we're going to do two directions this way, right? Yeah, this way. So yeah, try not to look. <laughs> okay, now, now, now this, one, this one is a sticker, so don't look and guess what it is. So you, you can take the box and pass it. And guess what, what think what it is, and then we're going to have quiz after, after this. <laughs> Believe me, there's nothing uh, that bites, nothing will... Uh, yeah, there's no animals or nothing uh, filthy or uh, that, that will make you... Yeah, don't spoil, please. No, don't look. Don't look in that box. No, don't look. I'm going to make a quiz after this. No, this is not. A, we, we're only going to play with this sticker one. The rest is just, it's obvious. So only the sticker one goes for the quiz. What? Oh, well, what do you think it was? So by vibration, which, which uh, neurons did we activate? Which one? Exactly. How about this one, the one that he's... he's well, exactly. Or Merkel cell, exactly. They, they're actually interlinked, so many things are activated at the same time. Uh, or what else did we have? We had uh, something. Play. Yeah, what was this? What do you think it was? Uh, stretch. Exactly, stretch, or it could be also indentation. 
So we could activate both of them. Uh, or uh, how about the, the sharp thing? Anyone remember those? You mean the hard thing that we couldn't figure out what it was? No, no, was not with the sticker. Just we didn't get that one. Oh, where is it? OK, well. No, no, OK. What do you think you're activating right now? Uh, exactly, exactly. Okay, so everyone tried the, the thing with the sticker box. Let's, let's have a quiz. What's in a sticker box? Turn on your remote. Please vote. Start the vote now. The sticker box, this one. The one that had hard, something hard object in it? Yes, yes. One more, one more. Okay, perfect. Let's see the results. Oh wow! Yes. Wow, very split. Well, guess what? So it is a hummingbird. Perfect. Four people. <laughs> That's pretty good, guys. That's pretty good. Yeah, who gets the right? Bravo, bravo. OK, so guys, a little bit more attention. So, so by touching those in those boxes, right, you activated the specific types of neurons in your skin. So do you remember what is happening when we activate a neuron? What is the world? That, well, active neuron, what does it do? What it sends something? What's the name? What's the name of it? What, what do you call it? Uh, yes, but there was a specific name for it, no? Um, very good, very good. Well, it's called action potential. Uh, <laughs> so by activating the neuron, it sends the action potential to the brain, in f and it forms a signal. So action potential is a signal. So this is a, a signal sending like this. So by the way, this could be extremely long. It could be from from end of the tip to foot to our brains to our like spinal cord it could be like a meter long uh, neuron so action potentials are simply electrical impulses caused by ions suddenly flowing in and out of the cell ions are charged and it form a flow of the charge through the neuron does anyone know how to make ions quickly flow in and out of the cell any ideas Well, there is this thing called ion channels. So we just zoomed in on this neuron. So all, all the neurons has membrane, right? So membrane is basically, is called a lipid membrane, which is basically oils. And the ion channel, they're actually made of proteins. And the only function of ion channel is to open and close. That's it, nothing else. It forms a pore in the membrane. So the ions, charged ions go, can go through in the cell or out. That's it, nothing else. Question? So it only works because it's negative down there? It just lets them go, they already want to go down there, but it, it just opens and lets them go down there? Exactly, so it only works when there's a gradient of ions. So if it's more negative here, positive will go in, and the vice versa. Very good. So, so there's different types of ion channels activated by different stimuli. For example, this, these are called voltage-gated channels activated by voltage. Ligand-gated channels activated by ligand, for example, chili or menthol. And also there are mechanically activated ion channels, which is activated directly by force. So when we touch, we first activate those mechanosensitive ion channels in your skin, which then activates a bunch of other voltage-gated channels and this create 
action potentials which goes to your brain. So discovery of mechanosensitive ion channel happened very recently, actually. In fact, touch is the least known sense of all. And they named the channel piezo. Any, any ideas what it could mean from Greek? It's a mechanosensitive ion channel. No, really. But cool. Yeah, so it means press or squeeze because it's mechanosensitive. So, so this is just a diagram of the channel in the membrane. But this, this is an actual photo of it. It's an electronic image. We view from the top, right? We just rotated it here. And please pay attention to this scale bar just to notice how extremely small that is. And this is the reason why all of us here feels touch, because of this guy. Uh, when humans evolved, did we slowly get, like, acquire other senses, or did they all start and just get better over time? So like in the future, will we get other senses? This is an extremely good question. So there is a lot of debates about this, but um, my uh, vision is that we evolve the processes slowly. For example, I will talk about a bit later about specific animals which sense touch much, much better than us. So depends on which way we're going through the evolution tree, the senses develop independently. And scientists are working right now on this problem. So very good question. So. This, I just wanted to show you the 3D model of this ion channel, and I made it gold for uh, visual purposes. So let's have another quiz. So the proteins that transport ions within the neuron are called, oh, sorry, go. Perfect, thanks. Perfect, you all got it right, almost. <laughs> so, so as I as I said, some oh. <laughs> as I said, some animals are champions in touch. So touch, for them, touch is the only way to find food and survive. Everyone knows who that is, right? What? <laughs> it's exactly star nose mole. So where do you think the most sensitive part of it? Yeah. Exactly yes. So the so because it lives underground, and it it doesn't see anything. It 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 um, completely evolved in different direction as you mentioned. It evolved in more touch is more important for than vision. For us, vision is kind of more, we get more information from vision. But for him, touch is more important. So it finds food and prey and by just scanning surroundings with his mouth. How about this guy? Anyone knows? Oh, exactly. Perfect. Thank you. Naked mole rats. Where do you think uh, the touch receptors are located in this guy? Yes, probably uh, the whiskers. So they are really interesting for scientists because first they don't sense any pain. Like this is probably one and only animal that don't sense pain at all. And also they live 10 times longer than any other rodent. And this guy, what's the name? Wow. Yes. So anyone knows what is special? Like why is it special? Because it lays eggs although it's a mammal. That's the only mammal, well, one of the only mammals that lays eggs. Wow. Yep. And this guy is obviously a duck. So duck is interesting because it looks for food in the murky water, so it doesn't actually see where the food is, but it just immerses the beak and tries to find it. So and actually, we're interested in, in the duck personally because in our lab, we study ducks. We grow them and we study them. For, because they're super touch sensitive. Okay, 
So, so how can we measure touch? So each of us in this room, we have different touch sensitivity. And scientists find a way how to accurately measure it. For example, clinicians use this, these special devices for patients which are not sensitive to touch, with touch deficient. So right now we're going to uh, split in pairs, and we're going to try to identify the most sensitive uh, part of your body.